Let's talk about our democracy for a minute. <laughs> but let's do it in a way that makes the snowflakes' heads explode. Let me be clear before this podcast begins. We are loud, loud proud, proud, and do not give a fuck. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Real and raw political and social commentary. The freedom to oppress the rights of other people is not liberty, you shit-eating moron. Ah, the smell of freedom of speech. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast, and this is Tony Michaels. Hey, Tony, fuck em. Sell it all. Hip, hip, hip. Auction it all off. Every single last one of those properties. Trump is broke as fuck. Now, here's the thing is that a lot of people are getting it all wrong online, and it's mostly the right wing. (laughs) <laughs> That's getting it completely wrong. They're like, hey, listen, you don't understand leverage. And you don't understand equity. And you don't understand mortgages. These property, he's not liquid. He has all these assets that he's liquid in somewhat in each one of them. Listen, that's how it works, bitch. That's how it works. When you put your the entirety of what your fake wealth is in two buildings, to appear to be rich, okay? To appear to be rich when they come to collect money from you, you may have to auction them off. You may have to sell the assets to get the cash. But the thing is, is that they're avoiding the actual truth that's right in front of them is Donald Trump said, he he told us under oath that he had $400 million liquid cash and he doesn't. He's not a fucking billionaire, folks. It's been a long time since Donald Trump could even claim to be a billionaire. And I know this has been hashed out time and time again on the interwebs. But he lied to Forbes. And really, honestly, the reason why Forbes is so pissed off to about Donald about Donald Trump is because in these court filings where Michael Cohen's like, yeah, we fucking lied to him. And the reason why is because... Forbes let us lie to him about his fucking net worth. They wanted the self-reported net worth. They didn't proving how much Trump or any of these rich people were worth. So it's all lies. It's all a stack of lies to convince poor people in this country that one day you may be rich. So what you want to do is you want to advocate for politicians that will make sure that the tax rate is low on the wealthiest of the wealthy in this country. That's the fucking lie that's been sold to us for decades and decades since the late 70s. It's cool to be rich. It's not cool to be rich. It's not. It's not cool. And speaking of rich, Elon Musk did an interview with Don Lemon, and it is Lemon. <laughs> it's about Lemon, like the fruit. <laughs> Don Lemon owns Elon. I don't even fucking, I don't even understand it. Like, <laughs> Don Lemon damn near makes Elon Musk cry like a little bitch. I'm dead serious. I thought Elon was going to fucking cry. <laughs> You're such a fucking cuck. You fucking little, you little diamond mine ass bitch. You a part tied motherfucker, you. Oh my God, you privileged piece of trash. Is sitting there act like he's self made and shit. Somehow he pulled himself up by his diamond mine bootstraps. His apartheid privilege. You fucking piece of garbage. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Elon, and I'm broadcasting this from X-Gen right now. You fucking piece of trash. You can't even handle Don Lemon? (laughs) Don Lemon is a weak hack, okay? 
He's a weak fucking hack. The guy wasn't even fucking pressing Elon very fucking hard. He was lightly, politely asking questions, and Elon was squirming, squirming in his cuckold. It's fucking hilarious. And then the best part about the whole thing is Don Lemon has to schoolhouse rock this motherfucker to explain to him how census, census and the fucking vote works. And that illegal illegal people in this country can't vote. If you're here and you're and you don't have sit, status of citizen to gain the right to vote, you can't vote, dummy. It's not possible. I know, I know a lot of people want to act like there's all kinds of election fraud out there, but there's no evidence that 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 migrants who are not citizens are voting. There's no evidence of it. There's hardly any fucking cases of it. There's more cases in the villages in Florida where they're fucking trying to double vote for Trump than there are cases of migrants coming in the country to vote. Well, the Democrats, see, the Democrats want people to come into the country so the census is increased. So they get so they get better, they get better representation. Well, if that's the case, then Greg Abbott would keep every single fucking migrant in Texas, you dumb motherfucker. You people are fucking wild and stupid out there on the internet. You right-wingers on Twitter who suck Elon's dick. You fucking Elon simps are fucking some wild, stupid bastards. You think the cyber truck is a truck? You think Elon is smart? And then you believe everything this stupid fucking Nazi tweets. Some wild shit. And I'm talking to you on fucking Twitter. I'm fucking talking to you. If you're a right-winger on Twitter, you are a dumb motherfucker. Tweet this out that I'm fucking talking about Elon. Tag that son of a bitch. I want him to hear my voice on his fucking platform. I want to see if he'll fucking ban me. Elon Musk talking about freedom of speech and how he doesn't need to moderate his platform for hate speech. Because it's freedom of speech. Dude, you are a wild motherfucker. You are a wild motherfucker. You you damn don't understand what private property is. You don't get it. You don't understand it. You don't understand what public is. You don't understand what private is. You don't get it. You just don't understand freedom of speech. Nor will you ever fucking understand freedom of speech. But that's okay because, you know, you invented electricity and shit. That's what these motherfuckers believe. These motherfuckers believe that Elon created, that fucking invented electric cars and all kinds of stupid ass shit. And this dumb motherfucker can't even handle Don Lemon in an interview. Gets all fucking pussy ass butt hurt. Crying. He was crying. He's fucking crying. Elon, Don Lemon made Elon cry. And the entirety of the fucking Elon Sims are like, yeah, Elon owned him. You people have some cognitive dissidents of which the likes I've never fucking seen before. You out there defending Elon, acting like he got, he fucking owned Don. <laughs> you people are wild. And the thing is, is like, you're like, Elon's like, look, I don't want to censor anyone. I don't want to censor the Nazis spouting off a bunch of fucking lies about Jews. Because that's that's the shit they do. That's the shit they do. That's the shit they do. On X. Right now. But Elon gets owned by Don Lemon. And that's fucking, I can't, I can't even tell you how fucking ridiculous that is. Think about it for a second. Don Lemon is such a fucking light-footed hack. He really is. He both sides shit all the time. When he was on CNN, he really wasn't that good at his job at CNN. He really wasn't. I mean, there's a few times Don would shine through, right? And this, this interview that I'm, I'm going to show you a few clips of, it really does make Don Lemon shine through. It really does. But it's because he's interviewing Elon. Not because Don Lemon's good at his job. And the best part is, is Elon's like, look, man, I don't want to censor anything. 
but he censored Don because he didn't like the questions that Don asked Elon. I don't have to answer questions from the reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform. The only reason why I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform. I'm on the X platform, Elon. Hear me and hear me now, motherfucker. You want to see a real goddamn interview with Elon Musk? You really want to see that son of a bitch crawl into a corner and fucking cry like a little fucking baby bitch he is? Let me interview you, fucking Elon. Let's do it, bitch. Oh, fuck, man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the kind of content that would make? Can you imagine the uproar in the right wing? Oh, they never. They He would never let me fucking interview him. Never. Never. Why do you think he why do you think he loves Brian and Ed Cranstein? Oh, he fucking loves Brian and Ed. They're his favorite little liberals. Here are his favorite little liberals. He loves them. Because they'll, they'll kowtow to him and act like Tesla's great, Elon's great, Elon's done such great things for X Chan. The only thing that Elon has done good for X Chan and really for social media is to expose how fucking ridiculous. That Americans actually believe that that in, to some degree social media is reality. It's not. It's the internet, bitch. It's the fucking internet. And more and more people need to really fucking realize what the internet is and what it isn't. That, that's why I have hope for the future. Gen Z actually truly understands the internet. They've never lived without it. They've never been without it. I mean, I, I remember a time, and I was talking about it yesterday in the fucking arcade on Twitch, where you had to fucking, if you wanted to download some girl-on-girl -girl porn, you had to fucking click on that bitch, go outside, play some basketball, maybe come in and have a snack or two, make you some macaroni and cheese, and then you could go play with your pud. That's how long it took to download a goddamn picture on dial-up. I remember those days, and I remember before those days, when the best thing you could do is hunt down a porno mag somewhere deep inside of a barn somewhere. And they're banning porn in Texas. <laughs> oh, boy. It's a brave new world out there. And these boomers don't understand it. It's okay. It's all right. And I don't mean the boomer generation. I just mean boomers in general. I'm a boomer sometimes too. I don't get it. Fuck, I still don't fully understand Discord. I feel I I, I don't get it. I don't I don't get it sometimes. I don't understand it. I don't understand gaming. That's why I have people play games. Skip was playing games yesterday while I was fucking talking shit over top of it. Because I I don't, I don't know any of that shit. It's okay. It's all right though. It's all right. You can admit it. You can admit these things, right? You can admit that you don't fully under fucking stand social media. So stop posting your stupid fucking hateful memes and stop saying your stupid fucking hateful stuff under an anonymous name. And definitely, if you own Twitter, if you own it, Elon, don't be retweeting shit and quote tweeting shit that you haven't read or that you fully don't understand because you're a dumb fuck. I swear to God, Don Lemon. Had to fucking schoolhouse rock this son of a bitch on how voting works in this country and how the electoral college works in this country. Totally had to, how a bill becomes a law. And he still didn't get it. That's because Elon is a fucking dum dum. And if you watch this interview, you know that he pretends to be intelligent. He pretends. Your bank account does not reflect how intelligent you are, you stupid bitch. And that's one thing that these fucking internet incels, if you're listening to me right now, which we got a, a fair amount of people watching on Twitter right now. So if you're an incel on Twitter and you're listening to me right now and you're commenting down below, good, good. Because I understand how the fucking internet works. And I understand that if you're fucking engaging with me, even if you hate me or you love to hate me, whichever one it is, I love you too. I love you back, bitch. That's good for me. It's good for me. I like pissing off the fucking Cheeto hump and fuck nuggets. I love pissing them off. And the reason why mostly I love pissing them off is because they help me in the algorithm. <laughs> you 
dumb fucking rubes. Go ahead. Call me names. Say mean shit. Post your weird ass fucking pictures and memes. Do it. Cheeto humping fuck nuggets. Never quit. Never say die. <laughs> I'm so scared of her. I'm going to block you. I'm going to block you because you say mean things. Get the fuck out of here. How long has it been since we've had Shaz on fucking Facebook? Is Shaz here today? That fucking vile piece of trash. Are you here today, Ch Shaz? Are you here today? Maybe not. He must be, um, he must be checking out uh, all the new catches on his... On his uh, grinder app in Pakistan, maybe I don't know. Is grinder in Pakistan? I have no idea. Apparently, it's in Ohio. <clears throat> we have elections in Ohio. Speaking of that today, that's news. That's news. You like the transition there? That's news. Ohio has an election today. That's right. Ohio. Ohio has an election today, and the Republicans are going to apparently select a Senate candidate who is a closeted gay man. Now, I don't have anything against this. I don't give a shit if you want to have guy-on-guy -guy action. Whatever you want to do, man. Fuck, whatever floats your fucking boat. Okay? As long as it's consensual and, you know, adults, adults, whatever. You do you, man. Honestly, I'll stand up for your right to eat, to eat ass like Alex Jones wants to eat leftist ass. I'll stand up for your right to do whatever you want to do. Love who you want to love, my friend. Do it. That's what we should be doing. Making sure that all people have liberty. But when you're trying to advocate to take away gay people's rights, and you're signing up for some fucking adult friend finder site on your work email so you can have guy on guy action, while you call your wife a lottery ticket, this guy called his wife a lottery ticket. He's like, oh, look over there. Look at my lottery ticket over there. So people think I'm not gay as I try to take away gay rights. As I get elected to try to strip away other citizens and other human beings rights to who they want to love and who they want to have sex with, even though I participate in that kind of activity. Gay sex for thee, not or me, not thee. <laughs> that's his. That's his stance. And I can't tell you how excited I am that this guy is going to be the Republican nominee in Ohio. And the reason why is because the fucking fam is not going to hold back on these fucking assholes anymore. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. There's a new fucking brand of liberalism in town, bitch. And it's not one that's going to fucking stand back and go, oh, we might offend somebody. Oh, no, we might offend some Nazis. We can't say that. We can't do that. Oh, no, we don't want to offend people. Fuck that shit. It's time to offend these motherfuckers. Time to drop the hammer on these sons of bitches. No holds bar. Press, press, press. Do not let up. Keep talking about how their fucking Republican Jesus is broke as fuck. He can't afford to pay attention at this point. Keep talking about all the closeted gay men. Don't give up. Don't stop. You fucking press, press, press. Open that closet door for these motherfuckers. It's time that the let liberals and the left get fucking right with this shit. Our democracy's on the goddamn line. This son of a bitch is talking about a bloodbath. He's talking about American Jews hate Israel. Feels like to me that they're going to probably, probably, uh, prob not probably, they are just like they're going to get black and brown people in staging ground concentration camp areas so they can repatriate them to Mexico and Africa. I'm sure that's what the fuck they're thinking. What do you think they're going to do with American Jews, huh? What do you think they're going to do? Oh, you hate Israel so bad? We'll send you back there. The writing is on the wall, motherfuckers. It's on the wall, and they're not hiding it. They're not, they're not, he, he said migrants aren't people. I can't say this. I can't say it.
because it dehumanizes them. That it's not it's not humane. They say I'm not humane when I say these things. Yeah, you're not fucking humane, you piece of trash. And you are dehumanizing them. And the left, the left is not the tolerant left anymore. We are not the Michelle Obama. They go low, we go high. Fuck that shit. They go low, we drag those motherfuckers down deeper in the mud. And we fight. You want a country? You want a democracy or not? Huh? That's the question. What do you want? And where the fuck do you want it? I am willing to say just about any goddamn thing I have to say. Almost any goddamn thing I have to say to save this fucking country. That's how fucking serious I am about saving this goddamn democracy from these fucking fascists who want to strip away women's rights, who want to criminalize fucking pregnancies, want to criminalize marriages because they don't like they don't like who they live. Well, excuse the fuck out of me. You can't watch porn anymore. Fuck you. I don't like that music. You don't get to listen to that music anymore. Oh, by the way, we're burning books, bitch. Where the fuck do you think this is going, huh? You think this is going somewhere where we're going to sing kumbaya with these fucking Nazis? And be like, no, this is really good government. We're really compromising here. Ha 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 ha. You want to compromise with a bunch of fucking Nazis. That's what you want to do. No, nah, that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing with the new brand of liberalism in this country. It is not. You can take your compromising with Nazis and a bunch of fascists, and you can stay, t- take that sentiment and stick it straight up your fucking ass. Because it ain't happening no more. And the American people are fucking sick and tired of this bullshit. Where you ain't fighting. For their fucking rights. No matter what your fucking skin color. Or your fucking religion. Or where the fuck you come from. I don't care if you were born in a state. If you were born out of this country. I don't give a fuck what language you speak. I don't care what gender you are. How you dress. I don't give a fuck. If you're standing for everyone's rights. Then you're doing it correctly. And if and if we just have to make a little bit of space. For these kind, kind hearted, you know, bourgeois liberals, fine, whatever the fuck you want to do, right? I mean, I, they're, they're in our coalition, you know, a bunch of goddamn libtard pussies, but what are you going to do? You know what I mean? What are you, you going to do? We got to welcome them to the party. We got our big tent party. We're not going to tolerate, we're going to tolerate them because they're not intolerant, but goddamn, they get offended every time someone farts. So go sit over there. And be offended and cry and whine and bitch and piss and moan. And the rest of us, the rest of us on the left that are sick and tired of the fascist bullshit, the America first Nazis, we're going to we're going to fucking do something about it. You can thank us later when the party's over. OK. When the party's over here in 10 or 20 years and these fucking Nazis have crawled back underneath their fucking rocks, and you're like, man, do you remember? Do you remember 20 years ago when these people were just saying this shit out loud? It was crazy. I was offended by what liberals were saying about them. I was offended that people were making fun of Greg Abbott for being in a wheelchair. <laughs> He's drowning women and children in a fucking river because he don't like the color of their fucking skin. And where they come from, motherfucker. He's drowning them in the fucking river. And you're mad? You're mad that I make fun of his wheelies? Are you serious? Well, you better better fucking toughen up, buttercup. Because I ain't gonna quit. I don't give a fuck what liberal gets in my comments. Like, oh, Tony, you can't call Marjorie Taylor Greene a skank. Fuck, I can't. Fuck, I will. That fucking skank cunt. This is how it's done, bitch. This is how you fucking win. This is how you win. And yeah, I know, I know a lot of people are going to hate on it. They're not going to like it. They're going to be really upset that there's liberals saying crazy shit out there, but it's crazy times, folks. And it's time to get right with democracy. 
And it's time to decide, are you going to fucking fight for it or are you going to sit down and watch other people fight for it? Are you going to sit down and be like, well, Trump's trials, they're definitely, man, they're definitely going to happen. All the Trump trials, I hope they happen. I, I and, and this gag order, oh, they're, they're going to put him in jail because of, again, uh, surely, surely they'll put it, they're not going to put him in jail before the election. You f dumb fucking rube. Speaking of jail, I don't mean to get off the rant here. <laughs> I mean to switch gears, but you know how I am. Peter Nav It's National Report to Prison for Peter Navarro Day. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump is broke and his lackeys are reporting to federal fucking prison. You couldn't have a, a better goddamn Tuesday, baby. I fucking love it. I fucking love this country and I love you. Every fucking one of you, whether you love me or you love to hate me, you fucking scumbags. I'm fucking ready and I'm fired up and we're going to have fun. We have Black Knight here today on the show. That's right. We're going to talk about Twitter. I, I want to I want to ask him if he thinks Elon is a pussy ass bitch. And I'm going to ask if he thought that it was it was a fucking great thing that Don Don Lemon, that fucking hack. Don Lemon made Elon Musk fucking cry. What a fucking bitch. Oh, Elon, come on my show, Elon. I'm on X. I'm on X, Chan. Come on my show, man. I'll interview you. How's that sound? You got the fucking guts? You got the balls, Elon, to come on my show? Huh? I broadcast on your fucking stupid platform. There's like a thousand people watching right now. Shit, if you retweeted it, fuck, we may have... We may have all kinds of blue checkmark bot trolls that come and pretend to watch the goddamn thing. So come on my show, Elon. Let's do this. But don't you go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We got Black Knight on Twitter. We're going to talk about Elon. We're going to talk about how he's a pussy-ass bitch right after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. What the fuck is wrong with you people? It's a rhetorical question at best. We'll be right back on the Tony Michaels Podcast. Letters from the Trucker Convoy. Dears Tammy, by the time we reached D.C., we was 50 strong in number. Some patriots ran out of gas along the way. We got plenty of Slim Jims and Skull. Near run out of Natty Light. Hope it don't rain tomorrow. So we can circle the city again. Here's Bob. Dear Bob, I'm fixing to send you some more of them Doritos you like. The red bag, not the live loving blue one. In your absence, I discovered a rash on my neck. And no, it ain't no hickey. And I even seen my cousin Brody in ages. Stay strong. Wipe your ass at least once a day. Here's Tammy. Fuck em, fuck em, fuck em, fuck em, fuck em, fuck em. We're back to the Tony Michaels Podcast. They're going to auction off every single one of these last properties. Every fucking one of them. I don't I don't know which one's going to go first or last. I actually hope whoever buys Mar Lago, they 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 he auctions it off eventually. And they I hope they bulldoze that motherfucker. Just bulldoze it. And then build fucking low income housing right there on the fucking beach. You know what I mean? And just only black people can live there. That's it. Black and brown people are the only ones that can live in that housing. That's it. And that's a requirement. And 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 that's what that's what that's how we give them. <laughs> Did you know that Donald Trump and his dad went to federal court and they're adjudicated racist? Did you know that Donald Trump and his dad are adjudicated racist? They went to federal court over their housing. And it was found that they were they were discriminating against black people. For the HUD apartments that they own in New York. They're, not only is Donald Trump an adjudicated rapist. He's an adjudicated racist. 
That's what he is. But I want to show you a video here uh, of some of these properties that possibly could be auctioned off. You've been hearing the auction, but uh, we put this together for you here. Let's go back and let's look at it before we bring Black Knight in. Four o two. That's how we used to do it at the livestock auction. I, I I'm a country boy. I used to go to the livestock auction, watch them auction off cattle. It's great. It was a great time. It was a great time. You know what else is a great time? Watching Elon Musk squirm in this fucking interview with Don Lemon. Oh my fucking god! It is. I'm telling you, there is nothing that pleases me more than to watch Elon Musk just fucking squirm in his seat, like he's trying to find his dick. You know, you know what I'm talking about, guys out there. When you kind of got the, when it's in a rough spot in your undies, you know what I mean. And you're sitting down, and you're trying not to let people know that you're adjusting your shit. You know what I mean. And you're squirming around, trying to get it to move where you want it to move. You know, so you're not sitting on it. That's what it looks like Elon's doing in this entire interview. And I've got a guest with me, and we're going to talk about it today. Black Knight from from Twitter. Black Knight, how are you, man? How are you? Hello, hello. It's a pleasure What's to up? join you today, Mr. Tony Michaels. It's a pleasure oh, to man. see you. I am so happy that you're joining me today because I was watching these videos of Don Lemon absolutely owning and burning down Elon Musk, making him cry. I thought he was crying. OK, wait, 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 wait a second. When yeah. you say absolutely owning Elon Musk, you mean like asking him fairly straightforward and simple questions that anyone can. Well, answer. you're being you're you're being really fair there. Because, because really, Don, Don, Don was not tough on him at all. At one point, Don's like, no, no, don't leave. Don't leave. I want to ask you a few more questions. He's like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make you cry. I know I make it. Listen, listen, please don't cry. Please don't cry. Don't. And, and the right's like, Elon, Elon, so tough. Did you see how he beat up Don? I'm like, you people are fucking delusional. How do you watch this stuff and come to these conclusions, you fucking boneheads? Like the right wing was defending Elon. Like he he had some kind of it was all 40 chess that he was playing with Don Lemon. I'm like, he made him cry, dude. He made him cry. <laughs> it was clear. Did you did you get the idea that uh that wait, Elon, but it, what was yeah. what was really wild about it? Go ahead, go ahead. What was really wild about it is that not only was Elon crying, he was crying over some questions that like any normal person would have asked him like hey man do you think like this great replacement theory is is somehow racist and elon was struggling to answer the question uh, he was asking him like hey do you think maybe ketamine might not be the best use of your uh you know uh, private consumption of of narcotic <laughs> substances and elon is like you know it's really tough of you to ask me if i have a prescription for these potentially harmful substances uh, it's like, hey, Elon, you know, I'm I'm black and I've experienced racism over the course of my life. You know, I can't speak as to what it's like to be maybe be from South Africa or or to be white. Have you considered like the perspective of of black individuals in America, knowing the history? And Elon's like, oh, oh, oh. it's crazy. It was insane. Well, you know that it, it is insane, uh, and and I, I've said it for a long time, and I, and I'm glad I have you on today because. Um, you know, bringing up that Don Lemon is saying, hey, look, man, everyone's got a different experience. Right. And and the only thing we can do as human beings is listen to someone else's experience. And we can list use our fucking ears. Right. To listen, because my experience is completely different than your experience. And I know yours is completely different than mine. There's no question about that. I mean, just by looking at us, we know in this country we would have two totally different experiences. And it, that's OK. It's OK that we had it. But we got to listen to each other. Right. I got to listen to you. You got to listen to me. But the thing is, is that Elon, Elon absolutely won't listen to anyone. And the reason why is because he thinks he's smart because so many people tell him he's smart. Right. And it's fucking hilarious that the moment just the itty bitty, just the threat that Don would challenge Elon's intelligence in that moment absolutely breaks him in part, it breaks him apart. But tell me, tell me what you really, really, really think. Is Don being tough on him here? Or is it just that these are these are questions that Elon can't answer because he's a dumb dumb? <laughs> I 
I don't know if he can't answer them because he's stupid or because his brain is melted or because he's went down this like right wing rabbit hole of insanity or the white wing rabbit hole of insanity, as I like to call it. Uh, I just, I, so I <laughs> heard a pro I, the white ring. Yeah. I heard a programmer talk about Elon this way. Uh, he said that when Elon was building rockets, he, he assumed that Elon was intelligent because he's like, what do I know about building rockets? And when Elon was building electrical cars, he was like, well, you know, I can only assume that Elon knows what he's talking about in the realm of electric cars, you know, because I've never built an electric car. But when he bought Twitter and was talking about like the infrastructure of Twitter and like programming and like the nature of like, uh, you know, the, the stack, the technology stack that Twitter is based on and had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. This guy was like, and that's how I knew Elon was a fucking moron because this is like <laughs> my expertise. He has no idea what he's talking about. And then it just like spirals out of control from there, right? Because when like Elon's talking about like advertising and finance and racial topics and immigration, you're like, oh, he has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. And that's how you know I'll never be in a Tesla or on a SpaceX rocket because that shit is bound to explode because this dude has no idea what the fuck he's doing. And and look, I, I applaud the guy for having perfect timing, right? He, he got in early on some green technologies with electric cars and Tesla. You know, technology he didn't build, uh, but so, a company someone else founded, and he just happened to have money from the, you know, the tech boom. He got in early. And the same thing with the Rockets, of course, you know, you hire a bunch of former NASA people to come in and do the engineering and you handle the marketing and the negotiating for the government contracts. OK, boom, you're a billionaire. But, bro, it's not like you did this on your own. You came in, swooped in, took other people's intellectual properties and built the fortune off of it, you know, with government subsidies. A lot of companies do that. That's not like the most impressive thing in the world. Like, bro, in, invent the electric car from scratch. That'll impress me. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's difficult to even figure out how to address this dude because he's so thoroughly in, involved in the social media space in the most intricate ways is as well as like involved in like practical matters like the war in ukraine his satellite technology is influencing the out outcome of actual real live combat in europe like the biggest mobilization of military forces we've seen since world war ii he's got a hand in that he's got a hand in how uh, things are perceived in, in terms of like political leanings on his platform because he can you know hit the button to mute our accounts on twitter and he can retweet all of his his dipshit blue check marks idiots on on the right uh just like the dude's out here calling president biden a traitor i like it's 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 so much it's so much that you can't even really wrap your hand your head around it and it's one guy and it's not even right. like imagine trying to sit down and explain to someone from 2015 who went into a coma uh you know who <laughs> woke up in 2024 was like yeah remember that guy with the electric car company uh yeah so it started out with him, some kids trapped in an underwater cave and he calling the the engineer who was helping to build a submarine a pedophile and it spir spiraled out of control from there it wouldn't make any sense you'd be like no. how did we get here but we because we've all lived through it we kind of just like eh. what well, so here's the thing is yeah. that with elon right? i don't even know where i was going with that it's just well, yeah that's how that's how fucking ridiculous he is that's how ridiculous is it? Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing with Elon is that it, it is totally complicated with this guy because this guy does get national security briefings because he does have a lot of technology that the DOD uses. Right. Because part of our part of our national security apparatus is privatized. And the reason why we do that is because we, I don't know, elect Republicans a lot of times and they want to privatize everything because they want the richest people in the country to keep stuff in their pockets full of fucking money. But it really it really goes to speak. That uh, the the dumbest and the poorest of us um, out there, and, and you call them dipshit blue checks because that's really the dumbest and the poorest of us out there. They may have money, but they're poor, intellectually poor, right? They don't have enough fucking smarts to work their way out of a wet paper sack. But here's the thing, is the thing that gets me is this interview 
If it would have been aired in the 1990s, Elon Musk would have been fucking ruined. Like he would have been ruined. No one ever took him seriously ever again. <laughs> no, I'm serious, man. We didn't, we have not worshipped pe rich people like we have every single year. It seems like more and more fucking dumbasses worship the rich people. Like, why are you worshiping fucking rich? Ri their bank account and number does not reflect their intelligence, nor does it reflect their humanity, obviously. Um, I mean, maybe I'm wrong because Donald Trump's broke now, but I mean, you know, there's a lot of different stuff going on in the world. <laughs> but here's the thing, <laughs> is that why, why in the fuck are these dumb, toothless, fucking poor people worshipping the rich? Like, that's the last people you want to have worshiping rich people. And it's really the Gilded Age, if you want to call it that, because that's the problem we have is us in the in the middle, meaning we have intellectual wealth, but we don't have physical wealth. Right. We're, we used to be called middle class, but we're definitely lower class and lower middle class now. Um, but the Gilded Age is there's so many fucking people that are uber rich and there's so many people at the bottom that are worshiping the uber rich. Right. Which is weird. It's a fucking weird thing that's happening. It's very strange. Like, I don't know if they're, and I, you know, I hate to do this. I'm glad we're not on like a conservative podcast because I'd be accused of dropping the race card in like two seconds in. Oh, dude, uh, you can say maybe, whatever the fuck Maybe you there's want a racial aspect. I don't know. You know. Okay. I appreciate that. So, I, you know, maybe, the, so there's this stereotype of like the black community, how like, all we want to do is, you know, entertain, sing and dance and, and, and shoot a basketball or whatever. Right. So, you know, a lot of kids, they, they spend their entire lives engaged in these activities, like, like sports with the idea, Hey, I want to grow up one day to be in the NFL or be in the NBA. I want to be Michael Jordan. I want to be LeBron James. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people invest all this time and energy into becoming good at sports to reach this ideal that like just, given the nature of professional sports like there's only room for so many right it's a closed market um maybe in like the white community the stereotype is like i want to grow you know because I, I guess you feel entitled to this when you're white i'm going to grow up to be rich just like insert you know whatever popular billionaire of the era is and i guess the billionaire of our era sadly is elon musk <laughs> i don't know why anyone would be like this guy but so people have this idea that hey like he's a billionaire and uh, you know look at what he's done i can be that too although like you know of course uh not to disparage your your caucasian compatriots but uh <laughs> Not many of them are no, go ahead. not many of no, them go ahead. are willing to not many of them are willing to work as hard and invest as much time and effort into becoming uh, a billionaire as you know some of my community is willing to invest into becoming a professional athlete. But I, I don't know, maybe like it, it's easier when you see you know most of the wealthy people in America come from a certain dem demographic you know, parents were somewhat well off, you know, white male, and you're a white male and your parents might have been somewhat well off given the economic history of our country. And you're like, well, I can be that guy. Because let me tell you, ain't no black dudes out here being like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start NASA 2.0. No, no one, no one that I know is, is thinking along those lines. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, no, we live no, in a world I, 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 listen, here's, where, here's the thing. Here's the Here's the thing is I I tell my audience all the time, look, I'm a white dude. Right. And a lot of white people steer away from conversations with black people because they're like, oh, man, I don't want to say anything. And this uh, and we're going to have a conversation here. And I'm really uncomfortable about talking about racism. And I'm sure they are, too. I'm like, black people are, are the last people in this country that are scared to talk about racism. Like they will talk racism with you <laughs> anytime you fucking want, bitch. And they will tell you exactly. How well, they look, it's an open racism. secret. It's. It's what we talk about all the time between ourselves. Right. You think there's ever a time where black people aren't sitting here talking Thank about you. racism? We're more comfortable with the idea of having conversation about racism than anybody because we usually spend a lot of time laughing about how racist things are. We're not like, you know, people tend to act like we're out here constantly 
living in victimhood and it's not like that we're like aware of it and it does affect our lives in in ways that maybe like if you're not exposed to it you have no concept of but we're also like hey man some of this racist stuff is just hilarious and i'll give you a perfect example like this is a a really niche example that we can all laugh at that you probably aren't aware of so there's this concept in the nfl you may or may not have noticed this i don't know how many of your your listeners are nfl fans but if you look around the league and you pick out the black starting quarterbacks you can almost guarantee that the backup quarterbacks are also black and you might be thinking like hmm i wonder why that is given the fact that most of the quarterbacks in the in the league t- tend to typically be white over the history of the nfl why are black quarterbacks and black backup quarterbacks on the same team and you know why it's because when your quarterback is black the most popular guy on the team is the backup quarterback because they can't wait to get that dude up out of there and get the (laughs) get the white uh backup quarterback into the starting position and then what teams do is like they see this coming so they prevent all that nonsense and the distraction and the in the chatter from the crowd in advance by just putting the black guy into the backup even if he might not necessarily be better than some of the caucasian backups in the league and you know what's really crazy about that is the white backup quarterback is oftentimes a victim of and you'll just I, I'm almost scared to say it reverse racism <laughs> I'm scared to say reverse racism that's great <laughs> I am too but it's just funny oh, God, that man, in this one great. instance like NFL teams are like we can't trust our fans so we've got to give a black guy a job over a white guy <laughs> I'm sorry alright I'm done oh, that's, yeah. that's okay. great that's great well, yeah just I, enjoy again, that little again, nugget no, l- listen that that's that's what I think that um you know, sometimes when we talk about like Elon here, right? And he talks about free speech, free speech, free speech. Oh God. Uh, yet fundamentally the right wing does not understand free speech. Like they, they just don't get it, right? They don't understand it. And I, I try to explain the audience in a way that distinguishes what free speech is and what your rights to speech is, right? Because those are two different things, right? Your right to speech is one thing. Your free speech is another thing. And and the consequences of either your right to speech or your actual free speech are, is a whole nother level of the and a layer of the onion, right? Because you have the ability to speak in this country no matter what. It depends on how many people are listening. You know, that's kind of the free speech part of it. But it also what the consequences of it are, right? And Elon yesterday, yesterday when they aired the interview of him and Don, when he was questioning him about free speech, but more than anything, it felt like to me he was squirming because, you know, not to get to the race part of it, but Elon's really upset that this this black man is able to speak quietly, ask him simple questions, and really upset him a lot, right? And he's really uncomfortable that Elon, he's not very self-aware in the first place, but Elon's very uncomfortable that a black man's making him uncomfortable, right? Like that's kind of how it felt at some points. Hey man, like Elon grew up in a place where black people weren't allowed to basically own property. And like, of course, now that he's a multi-billionaire, he ain't never had to answer no questions from no black dude before. He don't even know what that's like. He didn't have a context for that. Look, I, I can sum up free speech for you very easily. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So you you can go into your job and you can say, well, not your job, but like, say, if you're working in an office in a nine to five and in a regular corporate environment, you can go into your job and you can say whatever the hell you want without going to jail. But you know what you won't get if you go into your job and say something crazy another day at your job. So you can face all kinds of consequences for your speech but you can't necessarily go to jail just because you said something. Now there, of course, even then there are all kinds of exceptions and and limits on what you can say and when and where and what context, like you can't threaten violence. That's a fucking crime. You can't, you know, 
say you're going to murder someone like that's you know the the line is exists where like it it ventures into the possibility of harming some other individual you can't go out here and libel people and you know of even then there are exceptions with libel so there's there's all kinds of exceptions to the rule where you can and can't say whatever you want without being persecuted by by the government but in large part anytime you say anything you can face consequences because you have a right to say whatever you want and people have a right to react to whatever you say in ways that they see fit as long as it doesn't violate the law that's that's how free speech works it's not that difficult and then the fact that like like self-proclaimed free speech warrior elon here did one tough interview the one tough interview of his lifetime and then immediately canceled don lemon's contract afterward is like it's like the total opposite of everything he's supposed to stand for. And then like everyone who supports Elon is still backing him up. It's insane. I don't, I don't understand. And like, it's, it's bananas because like, of course, Elon's right wing rhetoric has made him popular with the same people that support Trump, of course. And it's just like the parallels that like, you know, the cult worships these people, regardless of what they say and how their actions are in total antithesis to what they supposedly stand for and people still support them blindly it it's absolutely mind-numbing to me like uh I, I do have a little hair here as you can see but like a couple of weeks ago i had an afro but the news has been so crazy i've just been pulling my hair out now it's down there <laughs> don't don't mind me it's it's been a it's been a rough couple of weeks here oh um, all, all the white people in the chat are like, what the hell is he talking about? What the hell is he talking about? What, what is he? <laughs> oh, the NFL thing? They, yeah, they've yeah. never even they're given still, it a, still, a they're thought. Still, they're, still try, they're still trying to figure out how is that reverse racism? They're, they're trying to do the math. They're like, so there's a quarterback. And there's a backup. One's white, one's black. There's another team. And they're still trying to figure no. that shit out in the chat. <laughs> yeah, so I, and my favorite example of this is like, uh, all right, so if you got a really good black quarterback, the reason why you got to get a good, uh, even a mediocre black backup quarterback is in there is because like the fans will be talking crazy. And I remember Cam Newton, like his first game in the league. I know he's, he's a little old now. He's out of the league. But like he came in the league throwing like 400 yards a game, his first couple of games, something crazy. And he was like running over linebackers and doing all this insane stuff. You know, went on to win an MVP, went to a Super Bowl. And there are people in North Carolina right now who will tell you Derek Anderson is better than Cam Newton ever was in his life. And that's how you know people are insane. And that's why, you know, <laughs> you, if if you could just like quiet down with the, the blatant racism, you might have a white backup quarterback for some of these teams that have black starting quarterbacks. But hey, man, you know, it's up to you guys to to work on yourselves and, and, and focus on figuring out where your blind spots are, where these things are and, and coming around of the times and then you know maybe that way you know joe flacco won't have to get kicked up out of the out of the browns organization <laughs> anyway yeah so, so you know back yeah. to back to freedom of speech and right to speech because here's here's the example that i always use for it right and and i i, I grew up in uh, missouri right in rural missouri <laughs> um and and we had a walmart right and um you can go to the walmart and you can protest out on the public sidewalk out in front of Walmart. But you can't. And you can hold a sign that says, fuck Walmart, right? Fuck Walmart. And you can hold it. And you can have an air horn. Fuck Walmart. And fuck Walmart. And you can yell it and scream it. You can have people with you have fuck Walmart signs even. But what you can't do is take the same spray can that you used to make the fuck Walmart sign and walk up to their building. And on the side of their building, spray paint fuck Walmart. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's you not go. your that's not your right to that speech, right? So so in other words, you do have the freedom to do that. There's not like military guards standing in front of the Walmart stopping anyone from spray painting fuck Walmart on the side of it, right? Like they are in Russia with the election polls, which is what Trump wants in this country, by the way. But uh, there's no military guards guarding the Walmart from people spray painting it and protesting it. That's called the law. That's why we have rule of law. So if you break the law, then we prosecute you in most cases, especially if you. Are yeah, these people this. want freedom. These people don't want freedom of speech. They want freedom for from consequences. And there's right. no realm in America where you exist free of consequences for your actions, good or bad. It just 
it's, it's not possible. It doesn't exist. That's not America. That's not the legal system. That's not the like the public square. None of that. There's no world where you, you can just do whatever you want to with no consequences. Sorry, guys. Well, you know, that that's a good point, because I like how you said it. Do whatever you want to, because I think that that has really entrenched itself into white male privilege, like these fragile white incel men who listen to people like Joe Rogan, right? And he kind of built his entire show around this idea that that white men can do whatever they want. Like, we can speed. We, we, I mean, we can, we can do whatever we want, you know? And it really fucking came to a frothy fervor during the pandemic when people are like, no, no, you need to put a mask on so you aren't getting fucking people sick. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not, it's not that we were, we, we don't want you to have freedom. We just don't want you to get some other motherfuckers sick in the grocery store. All right. You're going to go get milk and get eggs. And if you're going to go inside, wear a mask. If you don't want to go inside, order your shit to be delivered or order it and bring it out to your fucking car. Like there was all kinds of situations that you didn't have to wear a mask during the pandemic. Stay at home, bitch. Don't come out in public. But they were like, no, I get to do what I want. Because I'm white and I'm a man and you can't tell me what to do. And that's really, that's really the, the, the fucking idea. That's the thrust of it. Oh man. The second you ask like the majority of white people in America to not only do something, but to do it for the benefit of others. Oh, you've crossed the line, (laughs) sir. That's, that's, that's not how we operate in this country. No, it's incredible. Cause like, these are the same people who are like, I refuse to wear a mask in the middle of a pandemic, but they get in their car and put their seatbelt on. Like, well, in that (laughs) case, like, you know, the seatbelt thing is a requirement and a law and you could face potential consequences if you get pulled over, not wearing it, but you won't wear a mask just to like keep little Susie or, or grandma nanny alive or something. I don't understand like why. Yes, you're right. Why an entitlement? And and I don't mean to bash white people because I no do it please. I they need a little have bit hope. They need a little bit. Like I appreciate the possibility. No, well, yeah, but like I I come from a position of like it's possible for you all to change or to grow or to become better or solve some of our you know more entrenched you know multi hundred year issues in America. I'm not out here like oh there's no hope for you like white people will never change it's hopeless this will be a problem we'll never solve like i'm optimistic about the possibility that's why i continue trying to talk about these things in hopes that maybe someday you know people will wake up and present and will be presented with an opportunity to change for the better and take it uh yeah but i mean like expecting people who have lived in a position and i'm probably guilty of this as well and i'm a black guy but I'm also a guy, you know, as a guy, there are some privileges I have in, in social settings and it probably financially as well that that women of my same race don't have. And I have to constantly check myself for male privilege, even though I'm black. And it would just be nice if on occasion, like white people could check themselves uh, every rare occasion in situations where they might have privilege in areas where other people people don't and not even saying you necessarily have to change your behavior all the time it would just be nice if you stop and maybe considered it for a moment and that's what don lemon was asking elon to do when elon cried <laughs> let me see if i can pull that clip up um because it's it's there there is there is a lot of situations in this interview uh, and really, we can play the whole interview and just keep <laughs> railing on it and railing on it. I mean, because- it, no, we can't because it, it, it's like an hour long interview, but you'd have to stop it every 30 seconds to right. be like, hey, that was absolutely what bonkers. I mean. We never like- we would never get through it. We would never fucking get through it. Um, so let's, let's yeah, go the 24 this- hour Tony Michaels marathon. Right. Let's go with this. Let's go with this part here. Now, he's talking about um, what's illegal and he's talking about free speech. I know the exact uh, clip that you're talking about where he's crying, but this is where Don really makes him uncomfortable because I I feel like Elon is doing what you said he's doing is like, he wants the right to just do whatever he wants to do with no consequence. And that's what he believes freedom of speech is here. Let's see if we can listen. Well, that's not was what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And, and Don, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. But this, this, this is these are just a handful of extremely. You look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, 
these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you? Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but they're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters, you know, in all of these mass shootings attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so Don, you love censorship is what you're saying. <laughs> no, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, look, man, you <laughs> own a fucking, you own a fucking social media property and you are allowing anyone and everyone to post anything they want to with no consequence, with no consequence, because that's what Elon Musk truly believes that freedom of speech is, is that if you're white and you're a man, which most of his followers are white men, most of them are, and and if you are that demographic, then you get to post anything you want, say anything you want, do anything you want in the real world. On his world, you get to post anything you want with no consequence, none. I because don't have to answer questions from reporters. <laughs> he doesn't have to answer questions from reporters. You don't have to, but you are. I but mean, here's the thing. Go, okay, go we, we got to stop. So this is yeah, like, I. this is, there's so many layers to this that I don't even know how to start. But I'll give you an example of how I clearly know that Elon is lying. He's lying about, first of all, he deletes stuff all the time that's not illegal, but he leaves things up all the time that are potentially viol in violation of some laws. And we don't have to get into the specifics, but there's one guy I, you know, I follow his account, not because I'm a fan, because he's a nut job, uh, who, who posted uh, some child sexual abuse materials and the stuff stayed up there and then like people reported it and then like his count got suspended and elon let him back on the fucking platform like how is that you know anyway so i have a specific example just from my own account where i posted yeah. this uh this Which, tweet by the way says, i'm gonna post i'm gonna post your from, account i'm gonna post your account in the chat here while you're talking about it so people uh, can follow you on twitter but go ahead of of course so there was this incident with this nazi cartoonist you may or may not have heard of him stone kettle um whose name was revealed in some kind of expose and and people were posting his name on and on twitter after the revelation well apparently elon he and he had to have set up some kind of automated process for banning accounts that posted the dude's name like not like even in association with like the actual account on there, just posting in the name. If you put the name on your Twitter, uh, on your Twitter page, like the tweet would get flagged and you would have to delete the tweet to get access back in your account. So I posted not like, you know, I'm, I'm not like doxing this dude. I just put, how are we, well, how surprised are we really that a dude named Hans Christian Grabner is a Nazi? That tweet got flagged and I had to remove it or my account would have said suspended and then like what's really funny is it like he's such a terrible programmer or that or he just has so little staff that like the algorithm apparently flags like it flags the words but if you post a media like a a, a picture or a video of some form that also identifies the name in, in similar fashion you didn't get flagged so like uh way to half ass it there buddy that which is again how i also know he has no idea what he's doing running a social media platform but like even bigger picture the fact that this dude is like he he bought a social media company and then he was like i'm going to reinvent the wheel when it comes to moderating content and he started from scratch doing all the things like every other company before him uh, like learned by setting their platform on fire like hey oh you know we can't have nazis out here or it turns into eight chan and we can't have like anti-semitic racist stuff on here or it runs away you know our advertisers like the, the the content moderation principles of these other major platforms don't exist in a vacuum and they don't exist because like these companies are woke these companies are out here to make money like these content moderation policies exist to one protect their user base and two protect their advertisers because if you don't have a user base or you don't have advertisers you don't have any money you don't have any money and that's why the content moderation exists and to like like rip all of that out of your platform in in it's just like it's not in it's not in service of free speech because the the whole point 
of not having in again besides protecting your user base and your advertisers the whole point of not letting nazis on your platform is because if you let nazis on your platform have their run of the place then you end up in a place where you only have nazis on your platform and the inevitable conclusion of nazis running your platform is no one has free speech but the nazis right. and like well, just like <laughs> it, it's crazy well and here, i'll tell you a couple things about having the nazis on the platform number one the saying goes like this if there is a Nazi sitting at a table having dinner, okay, a Nazi sitting at a table having dinner, and there's 10 other people sitting with that Nazi, yucking it up, eating dessert, having a good time, telling jokes, there are 11 Nazis at that fucking table, okay? There are 11 Nazis. Now, if you, I also believe this, that I, 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 I really like fucking with Nazis. I like fucking with fascists. <laughs> Frankly, Punch, punching them is um, something that should be a professional sport at this point in this country. Uh, this is how far we've gone down this rabbit hole here. But here's the thing. The best place to go, like, throw some hits at a Nazi is where they hang out. Like, so, like, the best place, if, I mean, you know, you're not going to, you're not, if there's two bars, right, on the street, and the one bar has no Nazis, and you go there to fight some Nazis, you're, you're not going to get in too many fights, right? But if you really want to punch a Nazi, the best place to go is probably the bar that has all the Nazis and just start talking crazy shit. And you might get an opportunity. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying you might get the opportunity if you're within spitting distance of a Nazi, uh, you know, to throw hands if you go to the Nazi bar. So when I because you're not off the platform and I believe when Elon bought it, you were one of the ones that was like, I'm not going to leave this fucking place just because this asshole's buying it. Um, there's no way I'm going to leave this place. I'm going to stay in this fight because the, the 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 idea, the ideology is worth fighting for, right? A A Antifa, anti-fascist ideology is worth fighting for. And it's worth staying here. I, I didn't say I was never going to leave the platform. Right. But, you know, it would have to have deteriorated to such a point where it was unusable. And we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, there's still time. Uh, but <laughs> and the, it is and Elon. About, and like, it is Elon. It is Elon. Yeah, it is Elon. <laughs> He's gonna set it on fire. Um, look, I man, the the inevitable problem with allowing Nazis to just exist, and I know I'm like one of the I'm the intolerant left now. Why am I against Nazis? What's wrong with no? But um, so the the problem inevitably that comes with allowing the existence of Nazis is Nazis are not content to just be Nazis, right? you got to be a nazi like, right <laughs> it's not enough for them to to hate the jewish community or the black community or any other you know non-white non-blonde non-blue-eyed community right it's that you got to hate the nazis too or they're going to have a problem with you and the inevitable conclusion and and this applies to like all white supremacist beliefs is the inevitable conclusion of white supremacy is white and you could just look around like you you see how the nazis were like oh you know we're just gonna round up the jews in germany and like I, and I, I i apologize for anyone who's jewish listening to this like i'm not trying to like downplay the seriousness of this it's actually absolutely insane but like if you don't hear it like if if no one says it it just kind of just goes under the radar but anyway so like the nazis weren't content with just rounding up the jews in germany no 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 they had to cleanse all of europe and everyone who got in that got in their way had to go right and it's the same it was the same in america in the 1800s the south was not content with just confining slavery to the south no 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 they had to spread slavery all across the rest of the united states and when that was an issue they took their ball and went home and it's always it's funny that it's always called the war of northern aggression like the world the civil war in the united states the people who fired the first shots was from the confederacy dog they started this they started it so like the point is like if you let this stuff spread it inevitably grows to a point where you've got one group of people who are content not to punch the nazis and you've got another group of people who are nazis and then it gets to the point where the people who are content to not punch the nazis either become nazis or they have to punch the nazis and the point is, you got to just stamp this out before it gets to that point, because it just it it always concludes with violence.
It always does. Well, Every single and, and time. That's, you can't. That's a, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. And I and I want I want to I want to focus in on that real quick. And I want to show you a clip of Donald Trump talking about um, American Jews here because I think it's relevant to the conversation that we're having. Um, <sighs> but here's the thing: is that is that we, I can't, we man. Are I'm reaching, traumatized. I know. Well, we are. We. I know. <laughs> I know. We we are reaching a level in this country where I think. Um, the media has not done their job in letting the American people know what you're saying. Like, hey, they exist. It's time to fucking say they exist. And it's time to to label them what they fucking are and what they want to do. And the media has failed at their job at that. Um, and the American people are kind of walking around in a haze, not knowing what is coming. Right. They, they don't know what you're saying is on its way. Right. We're on our way to have a decision here, whether we are going to what are we going to do? Are we going to stand around and just let these Nazis let us make us all try to be Nazis or are we going to try to fight back? Um, but here is Donald Trump uh, with Sebastian Gorka, which is hilarious that Seb Gorka were to do this interview because um, Seb Gorka has some lore on the show here. Um, he actually re he actually gave Gabe Sanchez, you know, Gabe Sanchez. He gave Gabe Sanchez his name here on the show. The guy with the last name Sanchez in a Twitter space uh, where Nazis were talking and we kind of went in through <laughs> fireballs. Um, but here is Seb Gorka interviewing Donald Trump on his podcast. I think it is. I don't know, but he, they're talking about uh, space laser people. That's right. Do you think that's what they call them? Like in private, they're like, they're the space laser people. Like, what do you mean the space, you know, the Jewish space lasers? Like, what? I think that's what they call them. I think that's what they call them. 100%. Don't you think? No? Um. Okay. So, first of all, I froze there for a second, so I missed out on the video. But, no. No, like, I haven't, the space I haven't, laser I haven't thing. shown the video. I haven't showed the video. Yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I timed out. I don't know what happened. My internet connection, uh, the way no, my no, internet okay. account is set up. No, so I the space laser thing is actually so funny that like some of my my Jewish friends they have adopted calling themselves space lasers. It's quite funny, <laughs> and you know, um, and I hate to like accuse my host of like sexualizing an entire community of Jewish people, but but the way she my my co-host Ty the way she refers to yeah. you know her Jewish romantic interests is as space lasers. Um, it's said out of fondness. Uh, hopefully it's not like is derogatory a term is like, you know, maybe the N word is for us or, or some other terms that they use, but no, I don't know what they call Jewish people in private, probably all kinds of nasty stuff that like they, they used to say in the nineties, man. I just, in the nineties, like, you mean the thirties, the thirties, man, the thirties in Germany. <laughs> oh, well, no, like, uh, yeah, I don't know if they, I'm not sure if they're entirely familiar with the German translation for the word. Oh, okay. I, I don't, I but don't, yeah. well, I don't know what Stephen Miller calls him, but I'm sure it's something vile, but here's Seb and Trump talking about American Jews right out in the open right out in the open he's they're talking about him. let's listen oh the my Democrats God. hate bibi and netanyahu i actually think they hate israel yes i don't think they hate him. i think they hate israel when you see those palestinian uh marches even i i'm amazed at how many people are in those marches and guys like schumer see that and to him it's votes i think it's votes more than anything else because he was always pro-Israel. He's very anti-Israel. Now, any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, <laughs> hates their religion. They hate everything about Israel, and they should be ashamed of themselves. No, it's, it's uh -huh. hilarious. It's hilarious here that a guy who knows nothing about religion, because Trump absolutely has no clue about any theology at all. Like, that is the thing that he should speak on the least, and there is a lot of things he shouldn't speak on. But he, for him to sit and talk about anyone's religion at all. But then, then when, he, then when he says, then when he says they they hate Israel, like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Am like, I supposed to sit here like the professional broadcaster on like MSNBC or CNN or something where I'm supposed to listen to that with a straight face? Because that was insane. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even know. Like, there's so again, it's like these things where there's so many levels of insanity you don't even know which level to start at like first of all like just because you're jewish it doesn't necessarily mean you practice judaism 
uh, for one, you can just be like ethnically Jewish, like your family was Jewish, but that doesn't necessarily mean you. Pro- but even if you do practice the religion, it doesn't mean you necessarily support Israel because that's a government, and it doesn't mean you necessarily support the president of Israel because look, I'm American, and when Trump was the president of the United States of America, I was like, fuck this place, this is a disaster. <laughs> we gotta get this guy up out of here. Does that mean I hate America? No, it means the dude in power is a fucking jackass and is insane, and he has a lot in common with what Bibi Netanyahu was doing over there. And to be fair to Israelis, like they got his ass up out of there years ago. And the right wing nut jobs in their parliament brought his ass back without a majority of support the same way Republicans here are planning on doing with Trump. But look, even that aside, like you can be pro-Israel and hate Benjamin Netanyahu. You can also be pro-Palestinian and hate Hamas. They're not mutually exclusive. I mean, of course, you can have like any combination of the of the four. Uh, you can be pro Hamas. Well, I guess you can't be pro Hamas and pro Israel, can you? That no, kinda, no, 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 no. That, yeah, that, that would that's, be difficult. That's where we the line. That, that would yeah. be really difficult. <laughs> I mean, no, the, I would he's like, impossible. I would like it, to talk to someone. I would like to talk to someone who was pro uh, Hamas and pro Israel. <laughs> 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 yeah, what is that demographic? That I would love to fucking have that conversation. Like, dude, it would be like standing at a Trump rally in the sheep pens, holding up a microphone to one of these toothless rednecks to try to explain to you why they support Trump. Like, here you go. How do you like, no, really, I support Hamas and they want to kill all Jews, but I support Israel because yay, go America. Like what? I don't understand, yeah, but I'm sure that's what it would get. <laughs> Look, this is really incredible. The, like, this is the position that Trump is able to take when like his sworn enemy in America is a Jewish billionaire, right? Like I still ain't got my Soros checks. I don't know about you, but apparently Soros is running everything behind the scenes, even though, you know, Elon Musk is worth like 50 times what Soros is worth. I don't know. But like when you sit here and say everything is Soros funded, like every prosecution is a Soros funded attack against you. It's very difficult for you to come out here and say that, well, you know, in in that case, that's the one bad Jew. But the rest of Israel is awesome. Like what? How do we let him get away with like that? The media gives him a pass on this. It drives me crazy, man. It drives me insane. Like he says all this stuff that would be disqualified for literally anyone in the history of the United States except for maybe like a couple of dudes from the first uh, America First organization that sprung up in the 40s with the Nazis like other than them dudes like this stuff would get anyone else disqualified from running for office or at the very least would make them so toxic that no one would cast a vote for them yet here we are every single day i woke up this morning and i was like man yesterday was crazy it can't get any crazier than that what yes, it can. can't be any more new yes. trump i woke up to a new trump scandal there's a new yes. one there's a new the, one what is it alina haba oh Go yeah ahead. that's the other thing like there's more than one yeah so there's a lawsuit against trump that get, apparently got settled uh over the course of the evening yesterday for 80 something thousand dollars it's a new hush money scandal uh, it, i mean it's technically not new we knew about it some months ago but like the fact that it ended up in court and getting settled for thousands of dollars is new but the most incredible part of it is alina Haba was responsible for she basically weaseled her way into the life of this uh not mar-a-lago maybe bedminster new jersey i don't know trump's got so many useless worthless properties it's hard to keep up with but um, uh he's not gonna have it much longer no he's not gonna have it much longer (laughs) but yeah so this lady uh was sexually harassed on the job and and the company tried to cover it up uh using alina haba to weasel her way in and then convince this woman to let her represent her as a friend and then signed a deal a hush money deal that was disfavorable to her interests and they had to settle that out of well settle that in court for eighty some thousand dollars it it ironically leaves Le- alina haba open to a lawsuit herself but we'll get to that um and this is like a hush money payment settlement or, or rather a hush money settlement on the eve of a trial for a hush money payment like how is this possible how do you do this like the thing you're about to go to trial for you do it again how do you do it again and that's like he, uh, he's a recidivist right he can't help himself 
He's like got this compulsive nature where like whatever the options are when he's confronted with the situation, he always has to choose the most criminal, right? And then like, but once he does the criminal thing, if he's not held accountable for it, he's like, oh, well, it worked out. I'll do it again. So, <laughs> right, right. And, and we've got a perfect example of this, right? So in 2016, if you're not familiar, like Trump hired Paul Manafort as his campaign manager, one of these grimy, dirty trickster mm-hmm. dudes from the 80s, the, the Nixon era, who, who was Roger basically- Stone. Roger Stone type. Yeah, Roger. Well, yeah, maybe a little less shy. Uh, anyway, so he, <laughs> he was basically look, he doesn't look like a Batman villain as much. No, as that's Roger. the thing. Yes, Roger Stone actually looks like a villain, and and Paul Manafort just is a villain. So Manafort was basically b- barred from doing legitimate politics in the United States for damn near twenty years until Trump shows up in twenty sixteen with like no campaign infrastructure, and he's like got to figure out a way to get this thing off the ground and get it rolling. So of course he turns to none other than than Russian asset Paul Manafort. Paul Manafort was convicted of crimes. People forget about this, but like, you know, money laundering and tax evasion and foreign agent registration act failures. Wasn't so, there wait, just, wasn't wasn't there a president that pardoned him of all that? What was that guy's name? What was that guy's oh name? Oh man, is Luca Shink? No. So here's the thing. <laughs> uh, we I haven't even gotten there yet. Like Paul Manafort was in Ukraine working for the Russian installed crony of Ukraine. And and once they got that dude out of office, that's how we end. Anyway, look, this is such a long story that you're right. Absolutely. So the guy who got who was running Trump's campaign, who ended up getting convicted of all these crimes, uh, eventually on his way out of the door, received a pardon from Donald Trump late. 2021 or early 2021 he's back how do you hire a dude who like he doing the same thing oh my god and then it's like it's not even just that it's like one of the things he was convicted of is is laundering russian money hey man it's a surprise surprise trump needs to come up with 500 million dollars right. in a couple weeks here and like he doesn't know how he's going to come up with it he's put it in his court filings he went to all these companies and they're like oh no bro we, we can't help you we can't cover that 500 million dollar bond you got there uh how are we going to how are we going to manage to come up with this money paul manafort really real i'm telling you well here's the thing about paul manafort and i and i know i know this is going to seem strange when i first start saying this but what trump is trying to do is he's trying to win like he won in 2016, right? Because in 2016, he came down the escalator and he basically said, brown people from Mexico are rapists and they're murderers and they're not humans, right? He called Hillary Clinton crooked Hillary, right? And he hired Steve Bannon and Paul Manafort. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to demonize brown people coming from Mexico He's not calling Hillary Clinton crooked anymore. He's calling Joe Biden crooked, right? He's he's not sleepy Joe Biden anymore. He's crooked Joe Biden, if you go look at his true social post. And he's hiring Steve Bannon for Project 2025 as his, as his campaign CEO. And he's hiring Paul Manafort again. What he's trying to do is he's like, well, he's going back to the well. I won. I won in 2016 and we must have done something right. So all those criminals that I hired, I must hire them again. And it'll be an easy win. It'll be so easy. It'll be terrific. (laughs) Fantastic. Listen, listen. uh, Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. It'll be fantastic. It'll be the greatest win ever. Just like 20. We won so big. And you should have seen the crowds. You should have seen the crowds in 2016. They love me. They love me. That's literally what he's trying to do is he's trying to carbon copy what he did in 2016. I've got the perfect example of them continuing to go back to the same well. Um, So, and it it revolves around Paul Manafort. So Manafort was largely responsible for this dude, Yanukovych, Mm -hmm. uh, his accession to to the presidency in Ukraine uh, prior to Zelensky. And so his predecessor that Yanukovych was running against uh, was a woman. Uh, She was facing some trumped up it's basically like some some trumped up charges of of corruption or whatever blah 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 no pun but intended he, right Trump yeah no pun intended yeah i know the yeah. ha, 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 91 funny. felonies <laughs> right no but we're gonna so, have to find a new word we're gonna have to find it yeah new I, word. I know but so the the campaign the the platform that yanukovych ran on which was inspired by by paul manafort himself was lock her up 
-hmm. lock her up lock her get you know guess where they like transmuted that to uh from from the yanukovych campaign they took that to the 2016 trump presidential campaign and and use it against hillary clinton and and like it's it's just it's a it's yet another way of like these dudes don't innovate they just like something happened to work out one time and whether that was necessarily like causality or just correlation it doesn't matter they're like it worked once we'll just go back to it and, you know in the same thing with the brooks brothers riot in 2000 you know a, a roger stone special that they cooked up they, they just brought it back for 2020 or january 6 2021 it's like we'll just brooks brothers riot the capital we'll right. just in the it like they they can't come up with anything new oh and the fash is, the fash does not original they cannot no. <laughs> fash is, the fash cannot original at all no they can't no. at all he's like look look blood they poison the blood i didn't say that hitler may have said it but he said it differently i said it in english he said it in German. He said it differently. Like, that's literally what he, that's how he goes with this stuff. And he's like, no, it's totally different. I came up with this. I, uh, here's the thing. So I, look, it's, it's, <laughs> it's March of 2024. Uh, mm -hmm. The election in, in, yes, it's in November, but in all seriousness, like this thing is usually wrapped up. Like you pretty much dumped out everything you possibly could. You pulled all your punches. Like you did everything you could by October. Um, the RNC ain't got no money. The Trump campaign ain't got no money. The pack is broke. Their, their fundraising numbers are, are in the tank. Joe Biden's got more money than you Let, could ever possibly listen, imagine. Listen, what? No, wait, stop, stop. They got sneakers, though. They got sneakers. They got, sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> they got, they got these badass sneakers, man. They're going to sell oh, these sneakers. They, they're going to they're gonna run this campaign off these fucking sneakers, all right? They're going to run the they're campaign. They're going to try. No <laughs> well, okay, so if you look at it, and the other problem with that is like, okay, you're, you, it's like a presidential campaign. You're, you're going to fundraise a lot of money right well the problem there is trump's already raised a billion dollars since he lost in 2020 where the fuck did that money go <laughs> and like if you, if you've already tapped all your small dollar donors over the past four years when it's time to gear up for campaign season and, and there's no money left what what kind of campaign can you run there's there's no they don't have a plan to actually win what are they plotting right if they don't have a plan to run a legitimate campaign and win votes they got to be out here planning some kind of crime they have to there's no well, other way well here's the thing it, could you ask where all that money went here's where all the money goes with trump because trump burns through cash like like fucking you know an old redneck will burn through fucking marble 100s okay at like two and two in the fucking hand and two in the ashtray just fucking burns money like crazy the reason why he does is because he has to look like he's a billionaire. And if you're not a billionaire trying to look like a billionaire, dude, you burn through cash like crazy. Like you're just you're just fucking standing there throwing money in the fire is what you're Man, doing. okay. So I think it's it's a lot of things. Of course, it's Trump being irresponsible with money. Right. I, I think another like one thing that's got to be eating a hole in his pockets is like again, you know, he's 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 going to well he's just recently been found adjudicated in in court for inflating the value of in inflating the value of his properties uh -huh. to get these expansive loans right but he like the thing is you still have to satisfy those loans right but if your properties aren't worth what you said and then they're also not bringing in enough revenue to cover these loans like yeah okay congratulations you got like a billion dollars in loans how are you gonna pay those back and then like that's eating a hole in his pocket and then like all this money that he's been fundraising for the past four years with this pack like i and this is reckless speculation here i don't know this for sure i don't want to get the tony michaels podcast uh sued for the first time oh, i want you but, to i want you to <laughs> but what i assume is what he does with his packs and his campaign is he sets up these llcs to to do this like licensed work yeah. uh yeah, to, oh, they're, totally the laundering, they're totally laundering yeah, money yeah work that never actually happens but they just build a campaign anyway and then that money goes into trump's pockets but again like uh, the, you know even if you're stealing all this money from your campaign and your packs and and all of you know the the political fundraising apparatus like once you burn through that on just like even if it goes towards satisfying your loans so your properties don't get seized like you come out net zero right so when you got to come up with 454 or i i don't even know what the 
number is now. What what number does he have to come up with in New York? Is it five hundred? Well, it's, it's 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 getting bigger and bigger because you got the E. Jean Carroll on top of that. Then you have the money in Scotland too. Scotland. Okay. Been that oh fucking my property. god. Okay. So ch- well, here, let me play this clip. Let me play this clip real quick of Trump. This is him claiming all kinds of crazy shit that we now know is we knew at the time it wasn't true, but now we know it's not true. Here's a clip. Listen to this. So they put it down at 18 million and they said, I, I overvalued it because we had it valued at a much lower number than it's worth. And by the way, my financial documents are valued much less than my actual value. which Nobody even knows. Seek the loan. I didn't even need the loan because you see the kind of cash I have. I didn't even need loans. Maybe you don't do a deal or two. But I have a lot of cash, a lot of everything. You know, a lot of people are very surprised at how successful this is. You saw it today. Listen, listen, listen. I got money. I've got money. But today I don't have money. And that's the problem is if you prove that I don't have money, it absolutely takes the the gold out of my sneakers. Like this is the this is the problem. This is the reason why. And and, because I always, you know, I ponder this a lot. And I get this fucking question from people like, why do fucking poor white trailer trash think this son of a bitch is successful? And I'm like, because he says it. He says it, and he says it over and over and over and over again, and he fucking says it over and over and over and over again, and he never fucking shuts up about it, about how fucking rich he is and how successful it is. It's actually part of, like, white maleism, like this toxic white male fragility where they they point out their... Oh, no, man, that's that's not just white male toxic uh, behavior. It's just male. It's just male. Yes, it's it's just the man thing. Right. Yeah. Well, well, here, let me let me let me give an example of this fucking idiot doing this. Watch. I'm wait, really can you rich. go back to that I'm other video? Wait, 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 wait. Go yeah. back to the other video. Just pull up the screenshot real quick, because there's a couple of things I just want to point out about. Oh, how OK, insane yeah, this yeah. Is. We'll, we'll go back to in here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is this is incredible. Um, go ahead. So say it up. if you're an individual who's been indicted in multiple jurisdictions for a number of felonies, uh, you know, up to ninety one. Uh, given that a couple in Georgia were anyway, that's not the point, but like, I think the most important thing you want to do from a PR perspective, like the one thing you can't let happen, like you can't let this happen. Like you're looking at the picture there, right? What you can't, if you could zoom out just a little bit, I don't know, find a screenshot. So what you can't let happen is let there be a public picture of anything that makes you look like you are behind bars because he is standing by. He's right. standing by. He's standing behind that railing, looking like a fucking prisoner. They like, I, they <laughs> won't let me out of here. Well, Save you know, me! I'm was, going that to jail. The, that was the fucking best part when he went to the border and he was standing against the fucking fence. Oh, that fence! Oh, and he's fucking waving. I'm like, dude, I've been, I've been to Leavenworth. Like, I've been in Leavenworth, and I've, I've seen, I've stood next to the fence with the fucking razor wire on it on the inside of the fence. I'm like, dude, yes. that's the last place you want to be is standing next to a fucking no. chain link fence with razor wire so you can wave. And you can't let anybody like, oh, take a picture of that. That's hey. gonna be in a Joe Biden ad <laughs> in, in November. It's oh, gonna man. be like, yeah, right. Yeah, this yeah. this well, ad was paid for by Joe Biden, and it's gonna be a picture just, of Trump standing, standing behind the fence. <laughs> <laughs> if you look, if you like Joe Biden, I'm going to prison. This, uh, this uh, I'm Joe Biden. I'm Dark Brandon. I approve this message. Uh, man, someone, oh please man, don't make that. please don't make that video. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, we, we come up with all kinds of ideas. I'm sure that video that we just described that uh, ad is going to get spoofed and shit out. Um, and I'll, I'll tweet it to you later on. But I want to play this to you, uh, that other clip, where he's he's claiming he's fucking rich. And the best part about it is, like, people with half a brain knew that this guy wasn't fucking rich. Like, like we knew that this guy was a fraud and a liar. That apprentice shit, it's all phony baloney. It's, it's fucking reality TV, and everyone knows that shit's not real. Um, but uh, the toothless rednecks believed it, and here's why they did. Listen. I'm really rich. I'm very rich. I'm the most successful person ever to run. Fortunately, I'm very rich. I have a total net worth, and now with the increase, it'll be well over $10 billion. I'm really rich. 
Listen, listen, listen. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you because know, I've said it 15 times, but I'm super rich. Hey, can you afford a half a billion dollar bond? Oh, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me, excuse me, excuse me. Rude, rude. Let me tell you something about how liquidity works. And liquidity, listen, when you have property and you have properties and you have money. Now, this is the right wing's, um, this is their actual argument this morning on Twitter. And because that's where they defend this fucking fool. They kind of do it on Facebook, but mainly on Twitter. And what they're saying this morning is it's not that Donald Trump's broke. It's that he he doesn't have liquidity because he owns so many properties. Now, if anyone knows anything about anything, they know that if someone wants to appear to be really rich, they leverage as much of other people's money as they possibly can to buy as much real estate as they possibly can. It's one reason why Donald Trump has continued to appear like a billionaire his entire life because he controls real estate. Everyone knows in this country that one of the best assets to actually own for wealth accumulation is real estate, especially real estate as income producing. And the reason why is because you can produce a ton of fucking cash each month off real estate and not have to have a single penny of your fucking money into it. A lot of times you can convince banks to put almost 100% of their money into a property. And the reason why is because of the tax benefits on the ass end makes you appear even richer um, because you pay no taxes. So not only do you get tons of fucking cash monthly, right? Dumped into your bank account. You get to claim depreciation on the property. Literally on, on Donald Trump's taxes, not only is he claiming these properties are worth gazillions of dollars for bank loans. When he goes to pay his real estate taxes, he's he's saying they're worth pennies and that's where the fraud happens because he's fucking the people of New York by not paying the proper amount of taxes on the, on the worth. But then in his taxes, they actually are saying that the property is losing value, so he makes money on the ass end of the taxes to appear to be rich. And that's how this motherfucker has appeared to be rich his entire life. And then Mark Burnett, when the Russians came to him and said, hey, you need to clean up this Russian asset for us and create a TV show for him, because I think that's what happened. And Mark Burnett's like, this is going to be so easy to convince dumb fucking Americans that this guy's actually rich. And that's what they did. That's what they did. And that's where we're at. And this is why the right. Yeah, man. Like, can I de can I defend Trump for a second? Oh, I'm going to defend me. Trump for a second. Uh, no, I'm at. I'm at. Hey, I'm look, man. This is, just, this is, just, no way. Oh, man, it's going no, somewhere. Go, 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 so go ahead, go ahead. you you made a really good point about like generally. I and I don't know like how real estate markets work all across mm -hmm. the country, but I you know in, generally speaking, in New York, what these real estate companies do, uh, you're absolutely right. They just totally leverage the property. They'll just take out a loan against it, and once they've like paid off a small percentage of the loan, they'll just take out another loan against it like so so there's this ever ending cycle of just piling money into your bank account by by leveraging these properties uh the thing is you typically need to have enough money in your bank account to satisfy these loans when they come due and i think that's where trump is failing here so he's obviously his properties have to be leveraged to the hilt um, but you would think like, man, you know, all I got to do is come up with half a billion dollars and, you know, and, and I'll be fair. He's probably got a, a billion to two billion dollars worth of assets. You think he's worth assets. a billion actually? When no, 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 no. I'm saying he's got his name on properties oh, okay. that he if they weren't leveraged. He controls a billion dollars worth of real estate. Yeah, but the thing is, if you've got like a billion or two dollar or two billion dollars worth of real estate, but you got four billion dollars of loans and you only got like a quarter million in the bank, you are worth negative two billion dollars, and it's damn near impossible <laughs> to come up with with half a billion dollars when you're worth oh. negative two billion dollars. <laughs> and um, no one's gonna so, give you a half a billion if you're worth no negative two. No, and then it, like the insane thing is like. This is a dude who's bank like he's bankrupted a casino. Do you know how hard it is to bankrupt it? The only way you can bankrupt a casino is to build another casino right next to your casino, like gas stations. That's how you bet. And then he did it. He well, here's actually. The here's the thing is I'm glad you brought up the political campaign where the RNC's broke and he's broke. And now he bankrupt the casino because there is two things in this country that you can do that will guarantee to dump money in your pocket. I mean, absolutely guarantee it. You'll, you'll never go broke if you open up a political organization 
right? Broken up your political organization or a goddamn casino and they're foolproof. And he is fucking bankrupt both of those things. And they're like, this is our guy. This is our guy to run the country. This is our fucking guy. This is our guy. I don't even know, like, and I joke about like building a, a casino right next to your casino. I don't even know if that would necessarily bankrupt a casino. <laughs> no. Like you got to really go out of your way to have people dumping hundreds of millions of dollars a year in, into the into the casino because it it's it's a guarantee if you can get it built it's guaranteed to make money there's no it's fail proof and like right, the only way the you mob, why do you think the mob loved casinos so much that's why they loved casinos is because it's dog guaranteed. they built the whole city out in the desert with no water <laughs> that's how much money casinos make they built the whole it's like a whole sprawling metropolis in the desert, there's no water, there's nothing there but sand and casinos, and it's thriving. That's how much money casinos make, and he bankrupted multiple casinos. Like, what? That's not possible. He's and their then, guy, like, though. He's their guy. He's their guy. And, and then the way that, and like, again, this is, goes back to this thing, like, where he's never, he's always going to, like, draw from his past, and he'll, he'll never re... Well, he's always trying to reinvent the wheel doing the same thing. Like, he's going to take his casino strategy and apply it to the RNC, right? So he already put his daughter-in-law in charge. That was a fantastic move. And, and look, I'm going to be serious here for a second. I know this is probably not, like, the nature of your podcast. Like, I, I'm not a Ronda Romney fan. And, and she's a fucking moron, but I will give her this, like, as well as Kevin McCarthy. So her and Kevin McCarthy is useless as they are in general. They do have, like, one specific talent that is extraordinary valuable come election year. And that is fundraising. Like, they, they have the ability to put together a, a reasonably successful fundraising apparatus that can bring in hundreds of millions of dollars from, from you know, the, the large dollar donor to the small dollar donor alike. When you get rid of Kevin McCarthy and Ronna Romney for Laura Trump, who was out there stealing funds from these cancer kids and 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 running sham universities that got shut down for fraud, like who, the you know whose father-in-law bankrupted casinos. When you put that person in charge of the RNC, you've effectively like killed the campaigns of all kinds of Republican candidates across. Like, there's no way the Republican Party can like so like governors in these vulnerable seats uh where republican senators are up for election and then like all the candidates down ballot from there they're gonna have no support they're gonna have no support there's there's no coordination there's no money going to them there's like no structure what so it's just like a free-for-all out there in a presidential election cycle and you ain't got no rnc like what what do you there's no amount of money that you can steal from the rnc that's worth that like, I don't care. So if, say, you know, the RNC had $100 million in the bank, and we all know how strapped for cash Trump is, like $100 million. I, I, actually think, actually... The, I think the amount was about, they had about $18 million. Is no, it? I know, but I'm saying, for instance, if they had a hundred oh, okay. million dollars, oh, you're, you're yeah, hypothetically let's just, saying, what's yeah, the hy raise let's hypothetically million. say they had a hundred million. <laughs> like, the financial dire straits that Trump is facing it's not worth stealing that hundred million dollars from the RNC because they desperately need that money to win these elections. And then he's willing to do it. Then he's going to sacrifice the Republican party for like a handful of millions of dollars. It's fucking bonkers. Right. Well, here's the other thing too, is that he's going to do and, and that they're structurally changing the RNC because the, um, the financial structure is the RNC is like at the top of the fucking food chain, right? And then you have the Senate committees, you have the congressional committees, and then below that you've got like the state committees, and then you have county parties and stuff like that. And they're all fundraising money, right? And they all have their own financial, you know, uh, uh, foundation, but it all comes from the RNC, right? Yes, like, this is the one place in the world where trickle not or trickle down economics actually works. Political fundraising, right, right, and and it's the same way at the DNC. It's the same exact yeah. way. Like when you guys give to Act Blue, if you give to Act Blue, you're actively giving to the DNC. Now you are specifically saying with the. Uh, federal election laws, you are specifically saying, I want this candidate to get it. And then the only way, the only way for lower tier candidates in those lower parties to get it is if you give to the top fundraiser, right? So if you're giving to a Senate campaign in Act Blue, that senator can now funnel that money down to the state party. But the state party can't give the money up, 
right? They can't give the money up. So, and that's that's literally how the, the filings work. That's how the fundraising works. And it works almost exactly the same. So what he's going to do is he's going to steal the top line money. And then he's going to structurally steal all the bottom line money. So he's not only going to fuck the RNC, the national committee, he's going to fuck the Senate fund. He's going to fuck the congressional fund, which I, I'm really excited about this. Like this is like, I, oh, yeah. I, I've never wanted Donald Trump to steal so much money in my life. And Same. Then, I hope he go, then I hope he goes down to the state parties. I hope he gets down to the fucking dog catcher campaigns where they're raising like $15 every 30 days. And he's stealing their fucking lunch money for the Republicans to be dog catcher. Like, I can't wait. I can't wait for the reports to come out that these county parties, these count and like road districts, they're like road district fucking campaigns. Are like, why the fuck is the RNC? Why the fuck are they stealing our money? Who the fuck is stealing our money? And I can't wait for the indictments to pile up. Because they completely are going to let people get indicted over this because they are going to absolutely, absolutely violate federal election laws to the point to where oh, they have criminal. to. So the like Christina Bob, I mean, I don't know how much you much time you spend talking on this podcast. Oh, about Christina, about Bob, Christina like, Bob, I've covered oh, her numerous. It, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, she's been she's been out of the picture for a few months now. Well, but she's her new- one of the architects. She's a, 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 a co-architect with uh, Rudy Giuliani for the January 6th can- Cheeto Dust Kangaroo coup. She was in the yeah, war absolutely. room with with Giuliani and Steve. Bannon. She was. And she has now recently popped up in, for election integrity in, in in staffing on the RNC. So wow, she's going to be oh out God. there giving legal advice to the camp, yes. the RNC on how to raise this legal money, which advice. is absolutely legal <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah. And and if you're not if you're not if your listeners if you're not familiar with Christina Bob's work, um, her her most recent endeavor involved getting Evan Corcoran crime fraud accepted off the Mar-a-Lago documents case and turned him from Trump's lawyer into Trump's witness or witness against Trump. <laughs> I mean, it's that's, beautiful. She's really good uh, at this. She's that's how really good, good she is at her job. And she's so incredible at her job that like the only legal representation that she left Trump with was a lawyer who specializes in representing parking garages. And that's how he ended up having to pay $100 million to E. Jean Carroll. <laughs> that's fucking fantastic. And I, speaking of Steve Bannon, and I don't mean to switch gears here, but we got about 12 12 minutes left, man. It's been a great show. I didn't know how long you're going to stay on, but uh, we got 12 minutes left here. And I want to talk about project 2025 since we brought up Steve Bannon, this, this video oh. came from Sandy Bauckham, um, from CPAC where Steve Bannon's talking about project 2025. Now you remember the, the, the video of Jack prostate. I think that's his name. The pizza <laughs> guy. Uh, yeah. His name. And now you say his name, yeah. Jack prostate. I think it's Jack something prostate. like that. Yeah, Just, I mean, he needs know. his prostate checked. I'm, I'm uh, sure. A lot. But um, but he stood on stage said, this is the end of the democ- welcome to the end of democracy. We didn't get it done on January 6th, but we're going to get it done now and we're going to replace it with this. And he held up a cross. Like, no, those Kennedy. those comments were taken out of context. He was talking about the foreign automobile industry. Yeah, right. Well, that's probably what he was talking about. And and they just now figured out what the word context means. They had to Google it. Um, but here in context is Steve Banning talking about the overthrow of our democracy. Listen here. Come retribution. Yo, for the TV audience, we just had Johnny McEntee on here, one of President Trump's closest advisors. Johnny's going to be running all personnel. He's actually the guy over charge of all Project 2025. Okay, so do you know who McAvee is? McAvee, Wait, McAvee I think it is. John McAvee. McAvee. So John McAvee. Okay, there's McAvee, too many of these guys. Right, What? but John McAvee is a character in the January 6th uh, plot. Uh, he was he was actually interviewed by the January 6th Select Committee. Um, Johnny uh, Mac Mac Macany Macany Macaty I don't know Manatee whatever the fuck this guy's name is. He was one of he was one of the foot soldiers in the Cheeto Dust Kangaroo coup. And here is Steve Bannon saying he's going to be in personnel. Johnny McAvee during the Trump administration in uh, in the lead up to the January 6th interaction was basically telling people you're going to say. You're going to say that Trump lost, even if you don't believe he lost. Okay. Or you're fired. That's what he was. So this guy is going to be the one in charge of personnel for staffing project 2025. Now, a lot of people don't know what 2025 is. Most of my audience is kind of aware that 2025 exists and what the general idea of it is, but what they're really wanting to do 
is tear down our democracy from the inside. And how they're planning on doing that is just getting rid of all the protections that's going to keep them from tearing down our democracy. But let's Steve Bannon, there's like 20 more seconds of this, of him cheering on destroying democracy with fascism. Listen. Three, this is a for Joy Ann Reed, Chris Hayes, Rachel Maddow, and my favorite, Morning Mika. Suck on this. 3,000 day one to take down the administrative state brick by brick. Your days of leeching off the government and have the government leech off the American people over. Jane Circle, what do you got? So there he is bragging. 3,000. We're getting rid of 3,000 people. Day one. And that's what dictatorship looks like. Listen, listen. Oh, I don't think you know. I want to taste dick on the first day. I want to be a dick taster. Dick taster day one. That's what I want. That's what Except we're going to do. One. That's what he's going to uh, do on day man, one. I, I got so many. There's so many ways to go with this. Um, So I, I'll wrap. I'll wrap it up with, with something spectacular. But first of all, like the fact that he wants to go after Mika is just like warning Joe and Mika is hilarious because like if you were watching MSNBC in in 2016, like this is quite funny, but like I feel like a large part of the reason why Trump is even in the White House in the first place is because John and Mika were the first people to treat this dude like he was fucking normal and not insane, even though he was out here on the campaign saying all this crazy stuff. They would have him on in the morning and they would laugh and yuck it up and ha 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 and Trump's so funny. And and people were like, oh, so this is just like a character. He's not actually serious about it. And then, you know, come to find out he gets in office and oh, he actually is insane. But yeah, like... <laughs> Like John and Mika laundered this dude and he hears Steve Bannon is basically threatening their lives. So like that's that's one thing you get for showing your uh, even a small amount of loyalty to Trump. He's forever going to turn on you. But I think and again, like this is just we don't have enough time uh, no. for how insane this Project 2025 thing is. That'd be a whole episode of the show in its entirety. Oh, it would uh, be but, three weeks worth of two hour episodes to get through the shit. Well, Exactly. But like one thing you can look at um, over the course of like, you know, these far right institutions being hollowed out when when one of their, you know, one of these nut jobs takes control is. Um, so in Germany, once Hitler became chancellor, one of the first things he did, it wasn't like round up the Jews. It wasn't like, you know, kill off his opposition. The first thing he did when he took power as chancellor was like he took out his own guys, like anyone within the Nazi party who he deemed potentially to be a threat to his authority. Like he got rid of those guys first. Like you can read it like, you know, the the brown shirts, like famously Hitler's the, yeah, Hitler's the, S Proud the Boys. SA, the SA, not the SS. The yeah, no, not the Yeah, the predecessors. The, so the first thing he did was have those dudes took them out like because that you know as as effective as they were for installing fear or in some cases like rounding up support for him like once he once he had the power these guys were a potential threat to his you know solidarity within his party so he got rid of them and you can look this up it's like the night of the long knives you can read about it like a you know a 72 hour period where hitler cleansed the party well like what is trump out here doing took over the rnc what's the first thing he did fired all the staffers hollowed out the organization, installing his own handpicked cronies. He's going to do the same thing should he happen to be reelected to office in 2024. He's going to hollow out the federal government. And I think, you know, he's probably going to hollow out the rest of the conservative party, even if they're in office. So, you know, the way he, the way he left office in 2020 with the coup on January 6th, it's probably how he's going to start out in January 2025. He's probably going to go after Republican members of Congress because like those are going to be an immediate threat to all his plans. I just like again, we <laughs> there's this recurring theme where Trump keeps going back to the well of things that worked previously or at least things that he didn't potentially get punished enough for. So just expect like whatever insanity you think we experienced over the past seven years to he's going to start out with on day one and it'll be tenfold and it's going to come with cleaning house in the federal government cleaning house and his party and then eventually it's going to end in some kind of tragedy where a number of lives are lost uh, the same way it ended with germany i mean i'm not predicting world war three here just like 
just the inevitable conclusion again of white supremacy is is some kind of white on white violence. Don't you worry. I'm I'm guaranteed pretending it here. Should should Trump win in 2024, people are gonna die. You heard it first on the Tony Michael Bloodbath. Podcast. Bloodbath. Bloodbath. Well let's <laughs> let's let's talk about if he loses because I've talked about this and I I, I before we go because we got about five minutes. I've I thought about this a lot trying to figure out because it's hard like he's predictably unpredictable, right? Like you know what he's gonna say. Like this weekend at his Nazi rally, he is totally going to say, I meant bloodbath. I meant it. And that's what it's going to be. Bloodbath. Listen, I didn't get no context. I meant bloodbath. Like he's going to say it out Why loud. are you guys so against the bloodbath? What's right. wrong with the bloodbath? Right. Don't Charming don't you want to go to bloodbath and beyond? Bloodbath. They've got the best sheets. <laughs> uh, yeah. But blood bath and beyond the blood drives away the bed bugs. It's fantastic. <laughs> blood bath. Like you've never seen. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> like that's literally how he's going to lean into it. That's literally how he's going to lean into it. But I, and, and we all know, Hey, look, man, if he loses, we all know there's not going to be a bloodbath. The bloodbath is coming. If he wins, if he, that's, that's right. That's right. That's what I said yesterday. I was like, there's not going to be a bloodbath. If he loses, everyone's going to be like, good see you see a fucking you sorry loser but if he wins that's where there's gonna be a bloodbath and that's what he's projecting but here's what i want to know here's what i don't know because we know this is kind of like jonestown type shit you know what i mean like you remember have you ever seen videos of of jim jones like on the microphone like at at jonestown and he's saying crazy shit to try to oh, yeah. the people at jonestown now there is a moment during jonestown where Jim Jones turns against his people, right? And it come, it came at a, at a crescendo here where the congressman goes down. He's going to take people back with him. He tells his militant um, uh, security to go kill the congressman and the people who are going to leave on the plane. And Jim Jones knows in that moment when he does that, they're going to come back and get him. So what he does is he's really mad at his, at his followers because he blames them. Jim Jones blames them for what happened. So then he's like, you're all going to die and I'm going to kill you with Kool-Aid. And he and they have the Kool-Aid moment. So what is the Kool-Aid moment where the Trump Kool looks moment. at it? What is the Kool-Aid moment where Trump looks at his supporters and say, says, it's your fault that I'm not the dictator for a day. It's your fault. And then what do they do? What's the Kool-Aid moment? What oh, yeah. Moment? Well, we already had our Kool-Aid moment and it was like everyone coming to the Capitol on January 6th will be wild. Hey, hey, Tony, fuck them. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm so glad that you joined us. Tell everyone where they can follow you. Tell them where they can listen to you. Tell everyone. Tell the audience. Oh, yeah. You can find me on Twitter, Threads, uh, Spoutable if you're into that. That's that's my joint. Uh, at Black Knight 10K. You can also catch me on the podcast. Pardon the insurrection. It's everywhere. Podcasts are found. We even got like the audio up on on YouTube. There's no video, so in case you were like, uh, you know, disappointed by the still image. Sorry, guys. Uh, video's hard. That's why I leave that to Tony. But yeah, pardon the insurrection. Check that out. We do it up on there. Subscribe. I'm so like, glad you joined us. Stars. Thanks for joining us, uh, audience. Go follow him everywhere. Black Knight 10K. You said Spoutable, the Threads, and the X Gen. And also uh, go check out the podcast with Ty Ross. Ty Ross. Ty Ross is a yes, my she's girl. Our, she, that she's our she's a, she's a great fan. We love Ty here um, here at the Tony Michaels podcast. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon, my friend. You got to come back. We got to do this again. Have a great we'll one. Well, then have a great one. All right, everyone. That is a great fucking show. How fucking fantastic was that? That was banging licked motherfuckers is that what the kids are saying today hey my fellow kids is that what they're saying today it's fucking lit here's what i want you to do i want you to go to the tony michaels podcast that's right um we ain't got much of a grift here but we got a little bit of one go to the tony michaels pot the tony michaels.com hit the subscribe at the top that's free it's kind of a shitty grift go on down another shitty grift i got for you it's free to follow me on patreon you can also buy a membership if you really want to get on the grift but go join the discord server We're gonna subscribe have book, club. book club this friday book club and the book club's doing rachel bittacoffer's book hit them where it hurts how to save democracy by beating republicans at their own game by dr rachel bittacoffer and aaron murphy my friend Rachel Bittacoffer. So check that out. Download the Discord app and then click the link right here on the TonyMichaels.com for book club. Just hit the green check mark in the welcome center to verify yourself and then you'll find the book club. Get in on that. Don't fucking miss out. It's free. 
And there's all kinds of fuckery that happens over on the Discord server. There's like mounds and mounds of memes. And you can go and weaponize all, weaponize against, against MAGA all over the internet. Same time, same place tomorrow. Surf's up, motherfuckers. You've been listening to the Tony Michaels Podcast. Podcast. In your face commentary of current events and political news. No rules, no boundaries. I think we've made that perfectly clear. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll be back soon. In the meantime, follow Tony on social media at the Tony Michaels. And until next time, raise a fist and repeat after me. Fuck them. Murphy's Mealborn, head ass speaking. Subscribe now. to stop meeting like this. No sense of humor here? What? All right. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to make a brief statement. Um, I'll take a, a few uh, pertinent and relevant questions. Uh, and then, uh, and then um, I'll be going over there. So the, the little story here uh, as Navarro's going to prison today, um, you guys will uh, certainly focus on that little story. But what, what? I'm disappointed in this whole chamber right now. I got silence. I didn't hear a dadgum whistle when these girls came up through here. Not a whistle. But you can save that as they exit. <laughs>